In the real world, then, you become a totally passive uh, in the positive sense of that term. You become totally passive because you don't have a separated identity. You don't have an awareness of a body uh, that does things, a brain that thinks things. That, again, as Gloria explained, uh, you become one with the Holy Spirit. You become, as Jesus is, uh, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And it's simply his love which works through you. And it's that love which then directs everything that you say or you do. Uh, in the uh, uh, I Need Do Nothing section in chapter 18, Jesus had there's a line where he says, in no single instant does the body exist at all. Uh, translated into straight English in a declarative sentence, it means in the holy instant the body is not experienced. And the body does not exist. The body is the, the embodiment of the thought system of the ego, which only exists in the past, because that's where sin is, and in the future, where the fear of punishment resides. In the holy instant, which is, uh, in a sense, like a mini real world, uh, just as a happy dream is a mini real, real world, it's just a, 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 a glimpse into that, you, uh, you are totally identified with that love of Jesus or that love of the Holy Spirit. In the absence of sin, which being in the presence of love always means, then there's no projection into form. Remember, projection only comes from denial, and denial only comes from you ha you're having made sin and guilt real. Sin and guilt are not real, which obviously they can't be in the presence of love. There's no denial, and therefore there's no projection, which means there is no body. Literally, there is no body. When you have this, this awareness of being in the real world, you are aware that there's a dream, but you are not in the dream. Jesus was not in the dream. So you can think of Jesus as being someone who's placing a tele telephone call to you from outside of the dream, and you're sleeping in the dream, and rather than getting up to answer the phone, you bring the phone within your dream. So now you start dreaming about a telephone ringing. Right? And when you do this when you're asleep at night, it's because you don't want to get up. All right? So that your ego then automatically brings the, the phone ringing into your dream so you stay asleep. Well, that's what the, the world has done with Jesus. That's what the world is trying to, to do with, with the Course. And that's what the world has always done with truth, tries to bring truth into the dream. When you're in the real world, which means you awaken from the dream, and then you answer the phone. And then you find that it's not Jesus' voice on the other end. It's your voice. But it's not the you that you thought you were, because now you and he have become one. <coughs> then, because it's the voice of Christ which is your voice, which is his voice, which is everyone's voice. Right? And from that point, outside of the dream, you perceive the dream. And you could even see people reacting to you as if you were really here, except you know you're not here. Right? That's why he could teach uh, in chapter 6 about the crucifixion that the message was, teach only love, for that is what you are. Love exists outside of the dream. It doesn't exist here. As the Course says, the world was made to be a place where love could enter not. So love calls from outside of the dream. Right? It was the world's dream that they caught up with love and they crucified. Right? That, was not, that was not Jesus' reality. So that when you're in the real world, you know you are not a body. Others may think of you as a body, but that is no longer your, your experience. Right? In that pure frequency Gloria was, was talking about, there is no body. There are no separated thoughts. There's no thought of being an individual. There's no thought of being special. In the real world, you know you are one with Christ, which means you are one with everyone else, even though you know that they are still dreaming that they're separated. So again, in the, in the real world, there's absolutely nothing that you do or say you simply are. You know, just as the Course says about God, you say God is, and then you cease to speak. Well, you say Christ is, and then you cease to speak. <coughs> and in the real world, you know that you are one with Christ, as is everyone else. And you realize then that you and Jesus are not separate. And then you suddenly realize that's what his message has been for 2,000 years, that you and I are not separate. I am not my body. I'm not my separated personality or individual that, that you think. I am not the one that the writers of the New Testament spoke about. They were speaking about a figure in a dream. That was their dream. And they took me into their dream. My call was from outside of the dream for, for people within the dream to hear it and move towards me. 
and my presence will be felt within the dream, but not my reality. Again, my presence will be felt in the dream, but not my reality. And if you make my presence that you experience in the dream reality, then you stay within the dream. And now you have another idol you're going to bow down to and worship. And that's what leads to the, to the bitter idols he speaks of uh, in the clarification of terms. Instead, what he asks of us is that we gradually move from the appearance to the reality. That we move to the, to the presence within a dream, to the true presence that's outside of the dream. That's what he means when he says at the end of the obstacles to peace in chapter 19, uh, when the whole thing is over, and he says, together we will disappear into the presence beyond the veil, not to be lost, but found, not to be seen, but known. The Jesus of the world and the Jesus of the churches was a Jesus who was seen, not a Jesus who was known. Seen in the Course represents perception and duality. Known in the Course represents non-duality. Again, the Jesus of history that people have worshipped and built churches around was seen, but he was not known. If you follow his teachings in the Course, you, you too will move beyond the veil into his true presence. And then you will also know, just as he knows. That's what, what the real world is.